Hi there. Welcome to HashiConf Europe. Just a quick introduction. My name is Narayan. I'm a product manager on the Vault ecosystem team. And along with me is my friend Austin, who is a software engineer on the Vault ecosystem team as well. Today, I wanted to talk to you about something that we've all experienced, and that is that our infrastructure is moving. Our infrastructure that we have traditionally kept on-premise, uh, self-managed in the static space, uh, walled between a uh, in between four walls and a firewall is now moving and it's moving to the cloud. It is becoming very dynamic. It is uh, spread across multiple clouds and it is deployed all over the world. So with that in mind, I also wanted to bring your attention to the fact that not only is the infrastructure moving, but our data that also used to be behind those four walls in static uh VMs or static infrastructure is moving, and that is also moving to the cloud. For instance, today we use uh, Gmail or Office 365 for collaboration, uh, so our data is there. Uh, PowerPoint or Google Slides, our data resides with either in Azure or Google. Uh, we use Snowflake or MongoDB for data analytics and data storage. So not only is our infrastructure moving, our data is moving with it as well. Which brings us to uh, the topic that I wanted to chat about today is protecting your data in the cloud using Vault. And before I go any further, if you have any questions, feel free, feel free to uh, type them in the Q&A cards below. So quickly stepping back, we know that infrastructure is uh, moving to the cloud. How do you secure access to this infrastructure? You can use Vault today as a centralized secrets management tool, and you can provide fine grain access control to all of this infrastructure that's already been deployed in various clouds. If you're not familiar with Vault, Vault is a cloud agnostic, centralized secrets management and data protection platform. It allows you to bring your own identity into Vault. You can now broker your identity, provide fine grain access controls to various system backends whether it's AWS, VMware, whether it's uh, Snowflake or MongoDB, any, any backend that you want, Vault has an integration built for it. But what about the data? How, do, how would you protect your data in the cloud today? So let's imagine that your data is already in the cloud. You have operators that now have to build very customized solutions in order to generate and create uh, and distribute encryption keys to various cloud platforms, whether it's Azure Key Vault, AWS KMS, or other platforms that you're using today. What does this, what does this mean? This means that these are very customized solutions and your operators now have to uh, learn different APIs, adhere to different API contracts. And this all adds a, a, a workflow that just seems suboptimal. And furthermore, if you want, if you're in highly regulated industries uh, and you want to adhere to regulatory frameworks such as GDPR or uh, adhere to guidelines provided that by the Monetary Authority of Singapore or FINMA, the Swiss guidelines, uh, the Swiss banking guidelines, that is, uh, this may not necessarily work for you. Furthermore, you may want to maintain that root of trust of uh, your encryption keys for your data outside of the cloud provider's control. And the cloud providers definitely do realize that. And so how can Vault help you protect your data in the cloud today? Now, this is actually a, a, an actual customer workflow. Uh, a customer uh, today, you can uh, create custom solutions where uh, you would independently go talk to Vault, generate keys, figure out how to securely export those keys out of Vault, and then how to import those keys, again, securely into various platforms that where your data resides. Now, this solves definitely the problem of maintaining the root of trust outside of your control, but again, not necessarily super automatable. There are a lot of manual steps. Your operators are still uh, you know, uh, having to adhere to different API contracts from whether it's Azure or Google or AWS or other software providers. But I believe that there's a better way, right? And that's where I wanted to introduce you to the key management secrets engine. Today in Vault, which is Vault version 1.7, uh, we have the key management secrets engine generally available for Azure 
And in the next release of Vault, which will be Vault 1.8, we will have the key management secrets engine generally available for uh, AWS KMS. So what does a key management secrets engine do? It allows for operators to interact with Vault, just like any other secrets engine within Vault, and provide destinations that you can distribute these keys to. Vault then takes care of generating keys and securely distributing them to various cloud providers. All of this, very simple to use as Austin will demonstrate. Now, this allows you to bring your own key into various cloud providers. Azure calls them BYOK or bring your own key. AWS calls them custom and managed encryption keys. Various cloud providers and various software services call them something different. But in essence, Vault now generally becomes your root of trust outside of the cloud provider's control. This allows you fine grain access controls control to who can do what with those keys and who can push those keys. Now you have complete audit trail of who generated these keys, who accessed these keys, uh, and now you have the ability to adhere to certain regulatory frameworks such as GDPR or follow the guidelines set, set, up, uh, set forth by FINMA. So now I wanted to hand over to Austin that, so that he can walk you through the demo of the key management secrets engine. All right, thanks for that introduction and handoff, Narayan. I'm Austin Gebauer, and I'm a software engineer here on the Vault ecosystem team at HashiCorp. I'm excited to demonstrate how Vault can be used to enable some of these key management workflows that Narayan has laid out for us. Just a quick overview of what I'll be showing here. On the right is the Microsoft Azure portal, and in it, an existing Key Vault instance. I'll be using the Key Management Secrets Engine to distribute and manage a key in this instance. And on the left, I'll be using the Vault CLI to exercise the key management workflow. So with that, I'll go ahead and get started by enabling the Secrets Engine. The first thing that I'll do is generate a named cryptographic key called Demo Key. You can see here that it's an RSA key type of a specific bit length. Next, I'll read the key just to show some more properties of it. You can see that each key may have many versions, and the public key can be obtained for asymmetric key types. We'll use this public key later to perform an encryption operation. Next, we'll create a KMS provider resource in the Secrets Engine. This resource will represent the named Key Vault instance by way of specifying the Azure Key Vault provider, the name of the Key Vault instance, and by providing cred credentials that are used to authenticate and manage keys in it. I've gone ahead and provided those credentials ahead of time via environment variables. With that set up, we're ready to go ahead and distribute a copy of our RSA key that we created earlier to the Azure Key Vault instance. As a part of doing so, we're able to define a more specific purpose for the key. In other words, the cryptographic capabilities that the key will have in the external providers. Some examples are encryption, decryption, signing, or verification. In this case, we chose decryption. We're also able to define a protection, in other words, where cryptographic operations will take place in the external provider. Some examples are in software or in HSM. In this case, we chose HSM. We should now see that the key has been securely distributed to the Key Vault instance. Drilling into the key, we can see that the key has a single version, and we can see its properties. For example, the key type and the permitted operations. The Secrets Engine securely imports key material following the Bring Your Own Key specifications of supported cloud providers. The Secrets Engine securely imports key material following the Bring Your Own Key specifications of supported cloud providers. This diagram shows some technical details for how our key is securely wrapped for transit to the Azure Key Vault instance. The first step when we want to distribute our target key to the Azure Key Vault instance is generating a set of wrapping keys that we'll use to securely wrap the key and import it into the Azure Key Vault instance. The, for the first step, we will generate an AES key, and we'll also generate an RSA key in Azure, and we'll obtain the public key. Those keys will be wrapped, and we'll use the AES key to wrap our target key and use the RSA key to wrap our wrapping key. The output of those wrapping operations will be concatenated and sent to Azure. Azure will break those pieces apart, and then will unwrap the wrapping key with the private key, and then will eventually unwrap the target key with the wrapping key. 
Upon success, Vault will delete the key exchange key, and the key is successfully imported into the Azure Key Vault instance. So when we distribute our key to the Azure Key Vault instance, there are a few steps along the way. We'll generate a set of wrapping keys and a key exchange key. We'll wrap that target key with these keys. We'll send that to Azure, and Azure will take care of unwrapping those keys and securely importing them. Finally, Vault will delete our key exchange key, and that successfully imports the key. Next, I want to show how we can use this key to perform cryptographic operations. I mentioned earlier that we can obtain the public key by reading the key, so we're going to go ahead and use the public key to encrypt some local text and decrypt it using the private key in Azure. So here's the public key, and here's some plain text we'll encrypt with it. Now we'll go ahead and use OpenSSL with the public key to perform the encryption. And this is what the encoded ciphertext looks like as a result. So next, we're going to use the Azure CLI targeting the key that we distributed earlier to decrypt our encoded ciphertext. And from that, you can see the result, which we'll go ahead and decode to show that our original plain text came back out from the decryption operation. Next, an important part of the key lifecycle is rotation. I'll show what it looks like by rotating the key. The operation rotates the key in both the secrets engine as well as in the key vault instance. So now you can see that we have a new key version that is set as the current version, and it has the same properties as the prior version. Next, I'll show that we can enable and disable sequences of key versions. This is useful if we want to keep a key version around, but disable it from performing cryptographic operations. You can see here that our first key version is now disabled. Finally, I'll go ahead and delete this key. This revokes the key from the Key Vault instance. Afterwards, we can see that this key is no longer in the instance. I also want to highlight that after revoking the key from Azure, the key still exists in Vault. What this means is that a copy of the key was securely distributed to Azure, and we can redistribute the key to the same Key Vault instance or another instance at a later time. This provides additional means for disaster recovery. Finally, I want to highlight that this key management workflow is consistent across cloud providers. So the general user experience that I demonstrated will be very similar for managing keys in AWS, for example. That's all for the demo. Back to you, Narayan. Thanks, Austin, for the demo. As you can see, the key management secrets engine allows you to do uh, not only key, life, uh, life, uh, key creation and distribution, but also manage the lifecycle of the key from Vault. Now, if you're familiar with Vault concepts, the key management secret engine is just another secrets engine and allows, to, allows you to have a very consistent workflow for key management across various cloud providers and other platforms. Today, with Vault version 1.7, the key management secrets engine works with Azure and has been tested against Snowflake and MongoDB Atlas. With the newest release of Vault 1.8, which will come out in a few months, Key Management Secrets Engine will also support AWS KMS, and other platforms are coming soon. Thank you for listening to this talk, and hope you have a great HashiConf.